Hello, hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we're joined today by Emma Thurston and John Marshall. Emma is the chair of Belmont's Economic Development Committee, and John is Belmont's assistant town administrator, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. It's good to see both of you. T today, we're talking about the local rapid recovery program for Trapello Road businesses. And so let me start off by asking about the local rapid recovery program. Belmont Belmont's received a grant for this work. Isn't that right, John? That is correct. Yes. Um, Belmont was fortunate to be one of uh, 120 communities uh, in the state that received this grant. Uh, it's a technical assistance grant, which allows us to um, do some of the framing work that's required to help put some projects in place to assist and um, create some projects for the Trapello Corridor. Let's, let's talk about the context really quick. Um, how many and what kinds of businesses do we have along the Trapello Road corridor? And, and, and I think this, this is the, the, the corridor that runs from Waverly Square to Cushing Square. Um, John? That's correct, yes. And, and we kind of created this Trapello corridor uh, a little bit with the Economic Development Committee. Um, when there was an opportunity to apply for this grant, um, we were looking at the different um, business districts within the community. And we were really trying to get the biggest bang for our buck uh, in terms of an area of study. Um, so we, we looked at um, the corridor from Waverly to Cushing um, and said that that would be a great area to study because there's certain nodes within the area of business activity. Um, and there are some gaps within that area as well. So we figured it would be a great area to be able to study and be able to create some connectivity in. Um, there's roughly 170 storefronts um, within the Trapello Corridor area and 160 businesses, um, give or take. 25% um, of those are retail and trade. 25% uh, of those are personal care services, hair, hair nail salon, um, barbers, um, medical aesthetics, uh, also auto services and laundry and dry cleaning that kind of rounds out that 25%. There's 13% that are healthcare and social assistance, uh, and then 12% that are food uh, and accommodation. Uh, for the most part, the Palo Corridor, uh, most of the businesses have between one and five employees. Okay. 95% um, are uh, renting their space. Uh, and 50% um, had increased revenue um, the three years prior to COVID. So tell us, if you will, about some of the data that you've collected and how, how you went about doing that. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so we had worked with Faberman Design. Uh, part of the local rapid recovery was um, matching a consultant with the community, and we were fortunate to work with Faberman Design. Um, we had conducted surveys of the businesses um, through the list that the Economic Development Committee had started uh, formulating and drafting. And there was also an outreach to the um, shoppers uh, and the consumers as well. Uh, we had about 235 respondents to the consumer survey, which gave us some really great data in terms of shopping habits prior to COVID and then during COVID. And we could see that shift within it. So many of Belmont's businesses have, have been hurt by the pandemic, and we, we know anecdotally of cases in which uh, we've actually lost businesses um, during the pandemic. Do we know anything about how our Trapello Road businesses have fared? And, and, and perhaps, Emma, um, I'll ask that question of you. Yeah, we do. You know, one of the things that, that we're doing with the local rapid recovery program, as well as the Economic Development Committee, is trying to get trying to reach out more to businesses in, in all of Belmont, but particularly for this section. Um, you know, what we found out in our survey about this for the Trapello Road District is that 72% of those businesses uh, generated less revenue in 2020 than they did in 2019. So obviously the impact from COVID was intense and felt widely. Um, for 52% of those businesses, revenue dropped over 50% or 25%. So it was, it was a significant impact. Um, they're all seeing less foot traffic um, you know, 95, 98% of them reported being impacted by COVID in one way or another. Um, some of the 32% of them laid off employees, 76% had a decline in revenue. Uh, they decreased hours and capacity. Um, and some of them we have 
there were 56% of them that closed either temporarily or permanently. So overall, and, and you know, there, a lot of businesses paid rent through all of this. You know, a lot uh, there was there were there were, we heard of a lot of abatements, a lot of landlords working with people, but but overall, it was it was a pretty significant impact felt widely. So so let me ask then. Um, you know, it sounds like businesses have really been hurting. Um, what what is it that the local rapid recovery program? Um, hopes to accomplish, and Emma or John, um, please, please please jump in. Sure, I can I can jump into this. Um, so the local rapid recovery is looking to have some shovel ready, um, kind of in the best terms uh, available. Um, a lot of times when there are grants that become available through the state, it requires a quick turnaround. Um, you know, throughout the COVID pandemic. The town's been paying attention to all grants that are available to, you know, both the town side and the um, the business side um, from a recovery standpoint. Uh, and one of the things that we found early on is that there was a two or a three week turnaround for some of these grants um, that, you know, by the time we found out about them and by the time we were starting to put the documents together, it was almost too late to apply. So this gives us the opportunity to have some shovel ready projects. So when these opportunities come down the road, um, we can have the information that's needed to apply for these grants so we can put them into action. So, so let me ask John, um, is, it, is it possible that we'll see some of, um, uh, some of the, the federal dollars from the American Recovery Plan um, flowing to business assistance of, of one kind or another as a result of this work? Uh, so that's certainly a possibility. The um, the ARPA funds, which is the latest um, fund recovery funds that have become available, um, there is an opportunity um, for businesses and the impact of businesses within that. Um, that will certainly be something that will be taken up um, by the select board um, in order, you know, uh, for them to determine the best allocation of of those dollars. Um, there are multiple uses. Um, and there are different stakeholders with those uses as well. So, you know, certainly an engagement with the public around that. And I believe that there's a plan to have a um, public meeting in the near future with the public. All right. Let, let me ask about the timeline for the local recovery plan work. So it was, a, it, it was actually a very quick project. Um, the timeline from start to finish um, that they had given us was six months. Uh, we had applied in January and um, started work at the end of February, beginning of March. The project, uh, the goal of the project is to have it wrapped up in the middle of September. Um, we right now have our, our most of the way through um, phase two um, and phase three is when we have the, the final report um, and document. Again, that final report and document will enable us to seek um, future funding and future grants. Uh, I've actually already applied um, for a grant through the Department of Housing and Community, and um, they have a one-stop application um, where we are seeking funding for wayfinding. Um, that was something that had not only been identified through this local rapid recovery program that we completed, but also the business study that uh, Emma was a part in uh, back in 2018, 2019. That sounds right. So let me ask this, is this the beginning of a longer term focus on businesses along the Trapello Road corridor? And um, is there the, the potential for additional help from the town over the longer term? Yeah, I think there is. You know, when we identified this area, um, you know, the point was there's these different nodes. You have Waverly Square, you have Cushing Square, you have where Moosey's is. Moosey's almost acts like an anchor on that end of the stretch. And those nodes, are, they're not that far away from each other. So, you know, what we've been seeing as we've been going through this project is that there's, there has to be ways that we can explore um, and, and the local rapid recovery program is kind of the kickoff to that of how we can create that whole stretch to be a destination for people to go. So it's not that far to walk in between. If you go to Cushing Square, you can go up the street towards Waverly Square, you can create, um, you know, just walking paths, like just different ways to be able to connect that whole stretch, just like we have, frankly, in Belmont Center right now. Like, how do you take that concept and move it over to the Trapello Road Corridor and make a place that people want to go? They don't just kind of hit up one-stop shopping and go one place. They, they park, they go 
get their hair done, they go get some lunch, they go do some shopping. There's there's a lot of different areas and businesses that they can um, that they, people can use there. And I, I think making that a bigger, broader destination location for the town is, and the businesses there is really important. We could explore that definitely um, in depth, I think, after this. Um, anything else to add? Um, um in terms of um, where where uh, businesses or members of the community can get more information? Yeah, so on the on the belmontmass.gov website, there's a page for the Economic Development Committee. So I would encourage anyone to go there. We post um, not only our meeting minutes, but documentation about the program is that, that's all located there. And a big part of the local rapid recovery program is outreach to local businesses. And so we've held a couple of different focus groups um, trying to get input. We've sent out a couple surveys and, you know, we, we're always looking for more input. So I welcome anyone to go to the you know, belmont-ma.gov. You know, uh, I think it's backslash EDC. You can get right to the Economic Development Committee page. And I believe my email address is linkable there. You could email myself to get information. We do have a, a mailing list um, it, we're gathering it slowly. We've definitely made some progress getting contact information for a lot of the businesses, but we still have a ways to go. So please feel free to reach out to myself. Let me know if you, if you want to take part, you can come to the EDC meetings where we talk about it and give updates. Um, and I believe you can also reach out to John directly as well. If anybody out there owns a business, knows a business owner, manages a business um, in that corridor. And it actually runs from Star Market all the way down to Muzi's. So we did extend it. It's quite a significant stretch on Trapello Corridor. So that would be the best way to get information and to provide input to us and, and talk about the different projects that we'd like to do. We heard, as John mentioned, wayfinding was a huge thing that came up over and over. And what we're looking at is trying, how do we tie that whole corridor together in a cohesive you know, place, like a destination just for people to go. There's so many different businesses and so many different things for people to do there. So we think it's uh, pretty significant. This could have a pretty significant impact overall, I think. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Emma and John, and we'd love to have you come back um, once the report has been finished and the plan has been developed. We've been talking with John Marshall, Belmont's Assistant Town Administrator, and Emma Thurston, Chair of Belmont's Economic Development Committee. You've been watching the Belmont Journal's News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and we'll see you next time.